Hello, everybody. I'm going to show you here my method for doing the flanging for the center ribs for my bear hawk control. I start off with first with one of the center rib blanks that I've done, and I've already flanged the lightning holes. I did that earlier on my rubber mat press and the hydraulic press um, using this form jig here. And after I finished all of my center ribs, I then cut this form jig down using the master jig. So it's now, it's now going to be my, my forming jig, actually, for the center rib. So it's been routed down to the same size as the master jig, cutting off the edges that I usually used for, for doing the cutting. So I'm going to place this onto, onto my, my jig here. What I'm going to use for doing the flanging is um, a 2X rivet gun. Um, actually, I'm assuming it's a 4X rivet gun here, and I'm using a... <clears throat> excuse me, a TM Technologies flow forming head. Um, this thing is pretty neat for actually forming the rib, the aluminum. I have a little tendonitis in my arm, so this has really been helping me on, on not inflaming that quite as much. It probably doesn't save me any time, um, but it's been a lot, it saves a lot on the arm for the hammering part of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is clamp up the jig. And then I'm going to mark my rivet positions. So later on when I'm doing the fluting, I'll know where to flute so I don't do it right on top of a rivet location. Now I'm going to clamp it down with a couple of woodworking clamps. These have to get pretty tight to keep it from sliding. And I'm going to take a piece of emery cloth also and stick under the middle of this. And this will help, hopefully help keep it from sliding just a little bit. So then I take the flow forming gun and just kind of work my way across the first setting, the initial bend, and then forming it over. So I've done this side of it now, flip it around. One thing to know about using the flow form hammer, hammer if you're doing this much, you're going to need a pretty big compressor. Um, I happen to have a 10 horse compressor, luckily upstairs in my garage, so I don't have to hear the noise down here in the shop in the basement. But um, it's a two stage compressor and it can pretty much do a continuous flow for this rivet gun, which is really nice. A little pancake compressor would not be enough to do it. You'd have to be doing stopping quite a bit in between. 
So let's do this side. This side's a little easier. It's flatter. And it does get quite hot on the end. There's my hand moving away. This thing's heated up to probably 120 degrees right now. finished and I can go about starting the process of taking this apart and now straightening out the bridge with some flute. Take this out. In a, in a couple of passes. So I'm going to start off by fluting it to bringing it, start to bring it straight. Getting it fairly close, but on this pass, not perfect, because I'm going to still need to straighten this flange to 90 degrees. It's not 90 because of the spring back of the aluminum. So we'll do this side too. And I'll show you about how I go about getting this flange to 90 degrees. We'll get this one close. I could actually do it a little over it if I wanted to have it curl up the other direction because I'm going to take out some of this as I, as I adjust it to 90. So here we go. So now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this, this tool. Basically a lot of the RV builders use this on, on straightening the flange. That's where I originally got the idea. And it's basically a 2x4 and a piece of oak here. And this is cut to 13 degrees and the bottom of this is cut to 13 degrees. So when I pull it, it's going to overbend it, and the spring bracket brings it back to almost exactly 90 degrees. For this one, I'm going to need to do it in two passes, um, but it will get it a lot closer. It's a lot easier than banging it, so bring it down. time to see if we need to do any straightening there. Just slowly working my way down. 
flattening it out, looking for any gaps underneath. Be nice if I actually built a table that elevated it so I could see under it a little easier. It's getting pretty close here, just some small areas, a little bit over here. A few more. Straighten it a little bit here, a little overdid it there. A little more right here. A little touch more here. That looks pretty good. Now let's do this side. A little bit back here. This one's pretty close. Of course, not near as much fluting as needed on this piece. It's not near as much curvature on it. A little gap there. 